Hello, Critical Beauty Salon viewers. Thank you for joining me today. It's an amazing day because I have a special guest. I'm going to be chatting with Miss Earth Malaysia 2022, Dr. Kajal Kaur. And I've been following her Instagram uh, the last month or so, and I'm just really, really impressed by her advocacy. And so I can't wait to uh, meet her and chat with her. So let's wait for her. Here she is. Okay, she's trying to get in. Just bear with us for one minute. I hope we don't have any internet malfunction because it happens once in a while. <laughs> okay, she's connecting to audio, which is good. So if you guys have any questions for uh, Kajal, please feel free to post them in the chat box below and I'd be more than happy to ask the questions Hi, can you see me? I can I can hear you, but I cannot see you. Uh-huh. Okay, just give me a while. Can you see me now? Yes, I can see you. Hi. <laughs> Finally meet you. So I guess you're using your iPhone. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Okay. I tried to find the spot with the best lighting and I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down on the floor because this place seems okay. So yes, my legs might get very cramped after this hour, but it's going to be worth it. <laughs> I, I love your background. Did you just improvise it? <laughs> Thank you. Actually, this is a dupatta. It's a whale. So I actually just took my scarf and I just hung it up because at the back of this yeah. is... Like um, five inch thick medical books that Ooh. can be weapon if you throw it on somebody's head from the fifth floor. <laughs> okay. So, so, so I'm I, covered I, right so now. I, it's um, what time is it? Is it? It's nine p.m. in Malaysia, it, Tuesday, Tuesday evening, correct? So yes. I'm 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 in Massachusetts, which is like a twelve hours, you know, delay uh, behind Malaysia, but. How how are you getting your, your your lighting? Are you in front of? Do you have a ring light? Are you using a ring light? I have a ring light. Okay. The ring light is the back, and there's actually a book that's holding up my phone, which is on a suitcase. Uh huh. Because, uh, something about my life is that I have so <laughs> many pets. I have so many dogs and parrots and everything. So the only place that I can get some quiet time is my room. Okay. Well, best we all... Yeah, go ahead. So the, the best lighting is actually in my kitchen. But if I sit there, it's going to sound like I'm in a zoo. So oh. I have to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have to muffle all these sounds, all these animal sounds, I guess. So that's good. <laughs> So I'm finally glad to meet you. I've been following you on Instagram for, for the last four weeks or so. And, you know, it's very rare to see a beauty queen who is so involved with the advocacy or the platform that she truly believes in. I mean, you have beauty queens who compete in this earth once in a while. They talk about their advocacy, like uh, cleaning the environment. 
but they only do it during their reign. After their reign, they stopped doing it. But with you, I see that even before you became Mr. Earth Malaysia, you have been pursuing your passion for animal welfare and animal rights. And that's what attracted me to you because I am a big animal rights activist. I'm an animal welfare person. I have a dog. I have adopted several dogs and cats in the past. So anyone, I, I, you have five. Amazing. <laughs> That's even more amazing. So your heart for animals is bigger than mine, five times. <laughs> Same. It, it's not the number of dogs. It's like, you know, that, that intention to save them. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So I know you, but there are a lot of people out there who don't know you. Would you like to tell us a little about yourself? Oh, by the okay. way, how do, you, how do you pronounce your, your name, your first name? Kajal. Kajal, okay. Which I, thought was, I thought it was Kajal, so Kajal, okay. It's okay. I mean, I'm fine with people mispronouncing my name. As long as it sounds kind of like it, then it's fine. Sure. Okay, so Dr. Dr. Kajal Kaur. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Go. <laughs> You. So my name is Dr. Kajal Kaur. Well, my full name is actually Dr. Kajal Kaur Gil. And in Malaysia, we have an anak perempuan in the middle of our name, which is actually daughter of. So my okay. full name includes my father's name, which is Kajal Kaur Gil, daughter of Dalbir Singh. Oh. So I have opened it and just made it Kajal Kaur. So I'm 20- yeah, so I'm 26 years old. And I just graduated medical school in December. And I actually decided to choose a medical school that was close to home. And I have, well, visited only the hospitals that are within my state Mm -hmm. so that I could stay close to home and continue my advocacies. So I'm very fortunate that my university quest uh, was in Ipoh. I am from Ipoh. It's a city in Malaysia, which is surrounded by mountains. So that's a little bit about my background. And I chose medicine. A lot of people have asked me, you love animals so much, why didn't you become a veterinarian? And the answer is, I do not panic when I see humans sick. Like I'm very calm and I'm very composed and I can think straight. But God forbid, if I see a sick animal, I panic, I Your start feeling yeah. really sympathetic towards that animal. So I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be the human kind of doctor, not the right. animal kind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm an only <laughs> child. Yeah, so I'm an only okay. child. I have, uh, that explains a lot as to why I seek the friendship of uh, animals, because I've had a lot of time to myself. So that's that's one of the main reasons why I have so many pets, actually. Okay, so being the only child, did you wish you had maybe a, a sister or a brother or other siblings besides your animals? <laughs> no. no. So wait, so, so do you feel spoiled? Do your parents spoil you? Oh, no, absolutely not. I've had to do everything myself. Um, independence was not an option. It was it was the only choice I had actually. So mm-hmm. not having any siblings has allowed me to mature faster than a lot of people. So I was given the the liberty to be myself. Maybe if my parents would have had two or three other kids, they wouldn't have been able to focus so much on me. But now that, you know, it's just me, so they have had the chance to give me their undivided attention. Mm -hmm. So it was never a parent-child kind of a relationship. There was a lot of friendship within their parenting. So it was Mm -hmm. very nice to speak to them. I don't think that would have happened if I would have had many siblings. (laughs) That's true. That's true. So I guess you are the envy of a lot of people out there who have more than two siblings. <laughs> I, I have heard people say that actually, like, oh, you're yeah. so lucky, you're so lucky. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> now, uh, 
you graduated recently, did you? Did you not? Yes, the ceremony was a little bit delayed because of COVID, but it finally mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. So, so your, par your parents must be very, very proud of you. I, I think I caught my father crying oh. and he's this, you know, Punjabi man who is very, um, do not show emotions, but I think I caught him, you know, with tears in his eyes. So yeah, oh. they, were, they were very happy. Oh. Well, okay, you, you said earlier that you have many friends and of course, you know, your family. Now, how would they describe you in three words? Three words, schedule. They would describe me as talkative. Because I can speak for hours. Talk, 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 yeah. <laughs> and talk and talk. And they're like, how does this girl have energy? Secondly, well, it's hyphenated. Well, it's animal lover. It's an hyphenated word for sure, animal lover. Mm -hmm. And they would also describe me as independent. Okay. Those are yeah. actually three amazing qualities that oh, any, yeah. that, that every Miss Earth should possess so miss earth organization if you're watching out there please consider <laughs> miss earth malaysia as your potential winner because she's, she's she's amazing that, that, that means a lot <laughs> thank you so much now of course oh um finally miss earth this year is going to take place physically for the first time in two years in the philippines are you excited i am very excited i am well, excited is an understatement, actually, because I have dreamed of, you know, going to the Philippines to represent for so long. So to finally hear that it's happening in the Philippines is a dream come true, actually. And you, you wouldn't be traveling that far because it's too close, right? True. Yeah. True. It, we're, we're basically neighbors. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you share the same uh, time zone, pretty much, right? I think. Problem yes, we do. Manila. Yeah, you do. Yeah. That's wonderful. And I have Filipino friends. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, it makes life much easier as well. That's great. Now, of course, you know, Miss Earth focuses on um, environmental issues such as, you know, pollution, um, you know, deforestation, recycling, it, and all that, all that issues. But there are still people out there who are not convinced that pollution exists. How do you convince these skeptics about pollution? Well, I don't think that they do not believe or they are skeptical. I believe that they are in denial because everybody knows like, you know, ever since we were children, they would teach us that, you know, there's sound, light, air, water pollution. So everybody knows these things. It's just that they are in complete denial that our earth is headed towards irreversible damage. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I would like to show the world is the actual problems that are happening. So I don't mind getting, you know, uh, going to the actual sites where problems are literally happening and getting footage from that those areas. Because mm -hmm. if you would consider things like, you know, air pollution, Malaysia has a very big problem with air pollution where we are hit by haze almost every year. Mm -hmm. So going to those sites that are actually very badly affected and showing the world that this is happening, let's, let's not be in denial anymore. That I feel would really make a difference because when people see the problem, then they will really, really take it seriously. Yeah, I, I totally, totally agree with you 100%. I mean, one of the things that triggers me is, you know, people, people just like toss trash wherever they feel like it and not worrying about, about harming the environment. I mean, to me, to me that, that really makes me mad. <laughs> so. It boils my blood. Anyway, what do you what do you like to do for fun? I mean, you can't be serious all the time. You have to be fun sometimes, you know? <laughs> well, I'm actually very, um, well, I wouldn't say boring, but my activities are very, well, octogenarian <laughs> because I love gardening. Well, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. you like gardening and you think gardening is for old people? That's what I think. 
That's hilarious. Oh my God. <laughs> in my, okay, Ipo has, uh, Ipo is considered basically a retirement city. Yeah. So there are a lot of retirees that come here. And even my neighbors, they're mostly like, you know, six, in their 60s and in their 70s. And when they see me, they're like, she's one of us. She likes to do the things that we like to do. <laughs> and, you know, gardening, and we're all just like have conversations outside our houses. Like, oh, the weather is really nice today. Oh, the, you know, the flowers are blooming so beautifully uh, today. And I'm like, so yeah, all soul for sure. Okay, all right, <laughs> but when I, but I actually gardening is is a lot of fun because you when you go out there, you enjoy the sun. You're getting a lot of vitamin D. You're actually working out. It's a good exercise too. So I yes. encourage people to, to garden. Now, so please, <laughs> yeah. I hope I hope everybody you know likes gardening so, so that I don't feel alone. <laughs> You'll never be alone, kids. You'll never. Now, do you have a role model? Who is who is your role model, and who is the person you look up to the most? Um. Well. I do not have a particular role model. I will be very honest. What I do is I take traits from different individuals that I respect and I, you know, apply that to my life. Because I feel that taking, looking up to one person in particular is a bit difficult because every human being has their flaws. So I just take traits from certain people and I put it together and I use that in my life. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good answer. I, I agree. I, I think I also tend to pick the, the, the best traits uh, from every yeah. person that I meet. So eventually, you know, you learn from all, all sorts of people, not just from one person, but all sorts of people. Great answer. Now, we all have a dream job. What is yours? I fulfill both of them. <laughs> you do? Okay. Great. I've always wanted to become a doctor, and now I'm a doctor. And I've always wanted to be Miss Earth Malaysia, and I'm Miss Earth Malaysia now. So I've and, you know what? and you know what? Yeah, exactly. And you will be a doctor forever, and also a Miss Earth Malaysia forever. Yes. Nothing, and nothing, yeah, nothing can take away those two titles. From to Miss Earth Love. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's hope it gets upgraded to Miss Earth Love. Of course, of course. Yeah, let's all pray <laughs> for that to happen now. Okay, okay. So how would you talk about environmental issues? How would you approach, let's say, a little child who litters in the street? If you see a little boy or a little girl nonchalantly tossing a trash in the streets, how would you approach that, that kid? Well, if the child love. is... <laughs> Well, not so. I would say in a very, very uh, scripted way. Well, if the child is with a parent, I would actually ask the parent to pick it up. Because mm. your child did it, so you should have known better. So you should have actually guided your child. But if the child is alone, then I would definitely be much, much more compassionate. Because I feel bad. Probably nobody told the child that this is wrong. Mm -hmm. So I would be like, you have to pick it up. And this is a responsibility that you have to take. And then I would be all, I would be all doctorish on the child. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay. How would you approach someone who you see is abusing an animal? Oh, I, I would, it would be very difficult for me to be very kind to that person. I would definitely have to be in full-on defensive mode. And I would definitely have to call the authorities and take a video of it. Because that is a very big problem in Malaysia right now, actually. Now, does Malaysia have any animal cruelty laws? We do, but it's really bad. In my state, in Ipoh, there have been, I think, four or five mass stray dog murders this year alone. Mm -hmm. So it's really bad. Like, that's what actually drove me to try and become Miss Earth. You know, because I think um, it's something that goes down to the core values of you as a human being. 
if, if you care for an animal. So if you do not care for an animal, that says a lot about you as a person. That means you yourself are not a compassionate individual. Mm -hmm. So if you have the intention to inflict pain upon an animal, that definitely has to be a very severe penalty for it. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I think for me, uh, you know, as an animal rights activist, I, I, well, every animal on earth has a feeling I mean, they do feel emotions. They, you know, it, for me, there is no difference in suffering. Everybody is equal in pain and in suffering. So it really breaks my heart to see um, animals that are being abused constantly, you know, being used on unnecessary um, scientific experiments. And I was, I was gonna ask you as a doctor, what is your position on animals being used on uh, ex experiments in labs? All I can say is that I hope more advancements happen quickly so that we don't have to rely on animal testing as much. Because we have countries that are very strict about animal testing, whereby your products cannot go through their immigration if it has not gone through animal testing. So technology is not very far behind, but I hope things definitely speed up. Mm -hmm. And as a doctor, there have been so many medications that needed animal testing as well. So I'm looking forward to the future at this point. Like I hope more advanced advancements come faster. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think we have. I think we have gone a long way as far as um, animal welfare is concerned. I know there are now a lot of cosmetic companies that do not test on animals. You know, which is good. Um, there are now a lot of, yeah, there, there, there's now a lot of um, alternative to fur, alternatives to leather. Uh, so we don't have to use animal skin, you know, to, for, for clothing and whatnot. So there's a lot of progress, but there's still a, lot, a long way to go as far as changing other people's um, attitude about animals. So that's good. And hopefully you'll be one of them to influence these people. So that's great. <laughs> now, uh, Here's a good question. What has been your biggest failure so far and how did you overcome it? Okay, so I think this is something that um, quite a number of people know, uh, especially Malaysians. I actually did win the 2019 Miss Earth Malaysia pageant. So after winning the 2019 Miss Earth Malaysia pageant, um, there were things that happened that should not have happened. Uh, legal issues, and I was forced to. Uh, well, I put, I made the decision to actually announce that you know I can't participate this year because of so and so reasons. So that broke my heart definitely. It caused me to be very depressed. Um, I felt very, very down on myself. So that was a failure to me at that point. It's like, oh my God, some I got the golden ticket, but because of my own uh, morals, like I, I had to step down. So to overcome that, I think God is very kind to those who stay true to their journey and who you know, are very honest. And I kept very good ties with everyone in the pageant industry. Everybody knows, okay, she, she can do the work. So when I was given the opportunity to be Mr. 2022, that was kind of how I overcame the failure of 2019. Uh, okay, all right. Interesting yeah. because uh, we have a viewer who's, ask, who's asking, actually asking a question related to that. This viewer is asking, um, are you pressured that your country's representative to Miss Earth did really well for the first time during last year's Miss Earth edition? Oh, has in, uh, do I have any pressure to, yes. you know? Oh, okay. Her feet. Yes. Oh, I, I never actually saw it as something that pressured me because she did uh, very well. The first to actually, you know, break it to top 20. But I think I have that pressure on myself, even, even if she would not have, 
you know, made it to top 20 and I would have represented this year, I would have still pressured myself to head towards the crown because it was something that, you know, is very, uh, it was very, how do I put it? Something that is so important to me that, yeah, I just put that pressure on myself regardless of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Another question from the, from the same viewer. As you know, Miss Philippines, uh, Miss Philippines, Miss Earth this year is going to be much shorter compared to the 2019 edition. I think it's going to be just two weeks. Um, how, how do you feel about a much shorter competition compared to uh, two years ago? As a doctor, I believe that it was a very smart decision because last time face-to-face, uh, -face, although we are moving towards a post-pandemic era, but it was a very intelligent decision to make it for two weeks face-to-face -face because in case you know anything were to happen, um, the girls wouldn't be so affected. So we would still be able to, you know, within the two weeks, less contact and we will be safe. Right. So I think what they were doing is really putting the contestants first, which is a, which is a very smart move, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, have you been hooking up or connecting with your fellow Miss Earth delegates online? I have. I have been following some of them. They're so beautiful. They're all so talented and... I'm actually looking forward to meeting all of them because I still keep in touch with the 2019 delegates. <laughs> so now it's like I know delegates from like two uh, Miss Earth competitions. So it's very exciting. Yeah. Well, they they just crowned the new Miss Philippines Earth. Um, yes. And, um, you know, I think, you know, I think you two, you and her will definitely hook along very, very, very well. Yeah, because I see a lot of great potential in both of you. I, I think the beauty about the Philippines is that all Filipinos are really friendly. So I think she's going to get along great with everyone. Like, you know, <laughs> Malaysians and Filipinos in particular, you know, we interact with so many different races. Like, Malaysia is a multiracial country. So I think that's why we would we would get along very well. We would most likely be the two most talkative contestants for sure. <laughs> well, Miss Philippines has a lot of pressure given that she's going to be the host country. So she's going to be up on her toes twenty four seven. That that I can that I can tell you. Sure. Now, listen, yeah. So back to the question of environmental um, issues. What do you think? What do you think, well, not necessarily environmental, but what do you think is the biggest problem that's facing young people today? Denial. denial. It's, not, it's not ignorance. To me, it's denial. We know whatever is happening is bad. Mm. We know that things are, well, irreversibly being damaged. We see it in the news and people refuse to believe it because they're in denial. They're scared. So they are very afraid that, you know, this is going to happen. I'm not going to have a home anymore. So what we should do is actually give them some encouragement. Instead of being scared and running away from the problem, we must run towards it and fix it. So denial is definitely the biggest mm -hmm. problem that we face. Okay. Good answer. Thank you. <laughs> now, name, <laughs> name three things that you would never ever do? Oh, I would never do drugs. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I will work. And I would never ever abuse an animal. Okay, I think I, I missed the second one. So drugs, and then I missed the second one because there was an internet interruption. Okay. I would never do drugs. I will never smoke. And okay. I will never abuse animals. Okay, good. Everybody follow Kajal's rules. No drugs, okay. no smoking, no abusing animals, okay? Good. Now, Kajal, of course, everybody on earth has a habit. What habit of yours do people think is very annoying? 
I talk too much. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I talk too much. I remember in medical school, my classmates used to get very annoyed because it would be like 3 or 4 a.m. and we would be on call and all of them would be so tired. And I'll be like, oh, hi, how are you? And I'll be talking to the patients and they'll be like, can she just shut up? It's 3 a.m. <laughs> Wait, so do you, are you saying that you talk in your sleep as well? <laughs> always, um, always very hyperactive. Okay, that's funny. Yeah. That, that is funny. Well, at least a lot of vloggers out there who's looking for, for, uh, for beauty queens to be inter to interview, please reach out to Kajal because she likes to talk. <laughs> I don't, um, don't worry about the time, the time difference. I will definitely be up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Good one. Now we all have our dream vacation. For me, I, someday I want to be able to go to Italy because I've never been there. And I love, you know, Italian architecture and art. Now, what is your dream vacation, Kajal? My dream vacation is also to go to Italy. <laughs> Let's go together. <laughs> Going together. But my reason would be very different. It would not just be to, you know, enjoy the architecture. I want to enjoy the food. Yes. Because we Malaysians are very big foodies. Mm -hmm. So wherever we go, we have to try everything. So because, you know, they're so famous for their amazing pasta and pizzas, I want to go there to eat. <laughs> What is what? Wait a minute. So, are you are you vegan or vegetarian? I am a vegetarian now. You're vegetarian. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because I know um, your 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 background is Punjabi. Is that it? I am Punjabi. I am a Sikh. Yeah, that that that's what I thought. Because when I saw your last name, Kaur, that that's a very common Sikh name. So and. Well, uh, right? uh, Kaur means princess, and it's the middle name of all Punjabi girls. And the middle name for all Punjabi boys, uh, Sikh boys, is Singh. So Singh means lion, and Kaur means princess. So that's okay. how it works. <laughs> that's very interesting because one of my one of my favorite uh, Bollywood actors is Ranveer Singh. I don't know if you oh, heard. Yeah. I'm not See, You've heard of him? Oh, yes, he's one he of was, my favorites. Yeah, I think he was. His family comes from Sindh, from uh, w which is not part of Pakistan, I think. Yeah, but I, yeah, I think he's uh, he's one of the, my favorite favorite actors. And of course, he married uh, Deepika, Padukan. Deepika Padukan, which is she's she's gorgeous. I think she, she should have competed in Miss India or something. But anyway, yeah. So that's why uh, I love I love Bollywood. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, we interest. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking about beauty, how do you define beauty? Beauty to me means amazing personality. Because from some uh, from someone who has been in pageantry for a very long time, I see beauty in the eyes of those who are very sincere. So any, anybody can look beautiful in, well, some people are so aesthetically pleasing that they can even look good in garbage bags. But <laughs> the ones who are truly beautiful, when you look at them and when you speak to them, they radiate a certain kind of warmth. And that yeah. to me is really beautiful. So yeah. great personality equals beautiful. I totally, totally agree. Something about something about the person that radiates aura. Like, like right yeah. now, even even though I don't see you in person, I I see a lot of aura around you, which is like good energy, good energy. All right, You're that's, so that's, that's so energy. And you have the most gorgeous skin. I mean, you have like flawless skin. Like, what is uh, your what do you use for your what what do you use for your face? Well, many people have complimented me and I am very humbled, but, you know, I do thank uh, Good Genetics for it as well. 
because my parents don't have acne issues. And okay. annoying as this is going to sound, but just be happy all the time. Just be happy. <laughs> Because it really is, you know, when you when you're positive and you're happy, it kind of shows on your face. So have a very healthy diet as well. Good. That's good. Now yeah. we all, every beauty queen must have makeup. But what three makeup products that you cannot live without? You have to have them, all three. Makeup. Hmm. I, well, I'm going to include my moisturizer in this because I can't live without it. So I definitely can't live without my Neutrogena moisturizer because I have very sensitive skin. And this has been something that I've been using for years. And fun fact, my name actually means eyeliner. Get out. Really? Kajal means eyeliner. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so you that's why you need eyeliner. <laughs> because the root word, I think, in Urdu means beauty, but nobody remembers that. Okay. <laughs> but they remember knows. eyeliner. Yeah. So we see it in drugstores everywhere. Colossal Kajal. 24 hours Kajal. <laughs> so... It's something that I can't live without because it's part of my identity. I cannot live without my eyeliner. Okay. And yeah, so it's the two products. So one to line the eye and the other eyeliner, which most of the time I use my luck me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for my tree. Yes, my name means eyeliner. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Who knows, maybe one of these days you'll have your own eyeliner products, right? Ooh. After your name. But... No testing on animals, right? Okay. Never. <laughs> now, how much do you judge a person by their appearance? Oh, I never judge a person based on their appearance. I Life has um, taught me enough to never ever judge a person by their appearance. And I actually thank uh, medical school for that because I have been in very high-end hospitals and I have been in very, you know, in hospitals that are in rural areas. So I have seen many different kinds of people. And you'll be very surprised um, when you talk to that person and you realize that, okay, this person's actually really nice. Or a person can look so put together and they don't have the best personality. So I definitely don't judge anybody by their appearance. <laughs> Okay, good, good. Now, I think I know what your answer is going to be for the next question, but I want you to give a different answer. What makes you angry? What makes me angry? So my pet peeve is definitely bad customer service. <clears throat> okay, I need yeah, to I kind of... Because my mom is actually the manager in a post office. So she has been somebody who has been teaching me people skills my entire life. So it's a pet peeve of hers that I inherited. Okay. So because whenever she's like, oh, you know, if this was in my office, I would not have allowed that person to say that. So when now when I see bad customer service happening in front of me, I'm like, why? I'm just I'm just asking you a question. <laughs> so yeah, bad customer service kind of makes me angry. I totally agree. I hate bad customer service. And you know what? I realize that if people do not complain, uh, bad service will, can, will perpetuate. It will never change. So that's why sometimes it's important to complain. You know, reasonable complaints. Um, yeah. Otherwise... Yeah. Service will never will never improve. So I totally agree with you, definitely. Now here's a yeah, good question. I never wrote back, but you know I'm like, okay, you know I'm just asking you a question if you don't mind. Mm. <laughs> right. Now, Kajal, if you could have any superhuman power, what would it be and why? So <laughs> this is going to sound so. <laughs> Scripted, but I wish I could talk to animals. 
talk to animals yes <laughs> to talk to animals it's it's going to sound so scripted like nah, she doesn't mean that but it's something that uh i've i've actually tried the little kajal has tried to speak to her dogs hoping that they would reply her back so the adult kajal would be thrilled if she had that superpower <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of have you heard of the movie Dr. Doolittle? Oh that's book oh, called Dr. Doolittle. I have watched that Eddie Murphy movie a thousand right. times. As you know, <laughs> Dr. Doolittle talks to animals and he's the only one that they understand. So, you know, you who knows maybe you'll be a Dr. Doolittle in the maybe some day. <laughs> Uh, I remember this one scene from Doctor Too Little because uh, you know that that big cat was like really sick and he was the one that actually managed to save it. So that's that's when I was like, oh, I wish I could do that. Then I would give up medicine and become a veterinarian for sure. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Okay, now we, oh, okay. A question from our good friend William. William is asking. Do you feel you're not completely dressed without using fragrance and what perfume do you use? Does William know me? Because <laughs> that is that's carefully accurate. Okay. I never I never William, leave, you heard that? I never leave my house without perfume. <laughs> and it is something that i blame my father for because my father loves perfume and so i love perfume and i get a lot of my perfume from body shop actually because i like very floral fruity kind of smells i like flora by gucci that's one of my favorites so yeah william on the nose yeah william follow uh, kajal on her instagram now <laughs> Oh, and recommend perfumes to me. <laughs> Body Shop is also one of my favorite uh, stores because they're one of many stores right now that actually uh, sell products that do not uh, test on animals, which is good. So that's good. My my shamp my soaps come from Body Shop. Uh, some of my makeup comes from Body Shop. Like you know, even my. Yes. Yeah. They have yeah, they also sell candles, I believe, candles and uh, other good stuff. Yeah. Not I'm not too sure. Yeah. And at least in America, yeah. So that's good. Okay. Kajal, here's a good question. Do you prefer texting or face-to-face -face conversations? Face-to-face -face conversations for sure. Nothing gets misinterpreted. I totally totally agree. The one thing I hate about texting is because it it becomes so passive aggressive and then you can put all the you can put all the emojis and uh, and emoticons that you want but it can never replace an actual face-to-face -face interaction. So, I agree, Dr. Carr. <laughs> Thank Now, you. Here's a serious question. What is the hardest piece of criticism that you have ever received? Criticism. Mm. We all I like know. to criticize people. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, many people would think that you know my my weight has been a topic of discussion um, at the beginning. I mean now it's a little better because it's true. I I ate myself. Crazy! I ate so much of food during my final year of med school. I became a dumpling, so I think that was like a lot of stress eating. So people would think that it's that, but actually that didn't really affect me. But a very difficult criticism that um, was a little it was a hard pill to swallow was definitely. Um, Maybe she isn't so passionate about Miss Earth. Maybe it's just the fame, and that's why she came back. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of people were like, you know, maybe she's just here for, you know, that minor scale of redemption. Mm -hmm. It's it's not that. It's definitely not that. It's so important to me. You have no idea. As you know, I think one of Miss Earth's crucial. Uh, uh, 
competition segments is the uh, body, the body competition, the swimsuit competition. What are you doing to prepare for that competition? How is your physical training going? I have a trainer who is actually uh, in the army. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. He must be very, very strict. He is. So what happened was he saw me at the gym every day using equipment strongly. And he, he walked up to me and he was like, sis, um, I think you need some help. And I was like, really? And because <laughs> it was really obvious that I needed help. So what he started doing was um, it was very difficult to take your own advice, your own medical advice, because then I had to tell myself that chocolates aren't always the healthiest options. And I had to listen to my trainer on my diet and which exercise to do. So that is something that I'm doing right now. I am religiously following the advice of my trainer. And so you should, because, you know, I think, especially, especially when you're competing internationally, there are certain sacrifices that we True. all have to make. And that includes our favorite foods, uh, drinks, sugar, sweet foods. You know, we, have, we all have to, to stop taking them at this point for the time being. Yeah. Because I see pageant as a sport. Because I don't, I don't find it uh, very, you know, out of uh, out of this world like oh no this is this is too much i feel like you know, it's a sport mm -hmm. so for every sport there are certain qualifications there are certain criteria that we have to respect and mm -hmm. for me it's not about becoming skinny it was getting healthier like now i can run five kilometers and i won't faint so that's mm -hmm. good <laughs> exactly exactly yeah it's, it's all about being fit not so much so about the weight, because some people can look good, uh, you know, with a few extra pounds and still look and feel healthy. And same thing with being thin and vice versa. I see a lot of thin people who may look fit, but deep down inside, they're not really healthy. So it really, depend, it really depends on every person's individual body chemistry. And whatnot. So that's good. Good. And I want to respect the fact that there will be many sponsors during the Miss Earth competition. And I want to be able to wear all their pretty clothes. Exactly. So that's, yeah, that's, that's something that um, I myself have to have, you know, that awareness that I need to fit certain, certain criteria because Miss Earth is a very, um, well, it's it's a very big pageant, so they require you to be healthy and you know on your toes at all times. Mm -hmm. So I gotta do what I gotta do. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, question from our viewer: Describe the Earth to a blind child. Good question. Oh my God, that that's that's a very good question. That's a very deep question, actually. Thank you, countryside. Yeah, that's the question. I don't think I can describe the entire earth to a blind child in a single day. I would have to actually nurture that child and show them, like, you know, by touch. So I would have to bring that child to streams and, you know, make them feel that this is how beautiful, you know, what they can run. I would have to bring them to tree barks and let them run their fingers through it. So it's going to be a process that's more emotional than it is, uh, you know, physical or just describing it like, oh, trees are a certain shade that, you know, it's like this and like that. I have to actually make them feel it because that's what the earth is all about. I totally, totally, totally agree. Um, because uh, it's sometimes it's just a matter of learning. I mean, I think every day is like a process. We all are destined to a specific destination, but sometimes it's the journey, it's the actual journey itself is more enjoyable than, than the actual process. So as with, with, blind, with, you know, with blind people for, the, for that matter, even though a person is blind, they develop 
an extra sense, um, you know. And I think, and and I think the biggest advantage of a blind person is they don't see racism. They never experience racism like we normal, uh, you know, people do. So remember that. Okay? So they have to learn from from texture, from from smell, smell you know, from touching, from hearing, yeah. Uh, the other senses to them. So it's going to be taking them on a journey to describe the earth. It can never be one process. Like, oh, the earth is this, there are trees, there's water, there's, you know, the earth. It's too superficial that way. I agree. Totally agree. Here's a good question. Kajal, what do most people think about you is false? But it is actually true. Oh, um, people think that it's false, but it's actually true. Oh, that's a tough one. What about me is false, but it's actually true? Hmm. I think. When people look at me, they think that I am very um, uptight. And, you know, I would like to say it's false, but it's actually kind of true. I have kept myself very controlled all my life. Mm -hmm. So I have the face like, you know, uh, she looks like a very, you know, uptight kind of person. And they would be like, oh no, yeah. it can't be. But it's actually kind of true. Do you think do you think some people are intimidated by you, by your intelligence, by your education, by your beauty, all that stuff? I mean, well, I would be honored if people think that, you know, I am all that. Like I'm beautiful and intelligent. Thank you so much. But um I hope they don't get intimidated. <laughs> I hope they don't. Because deep down, I am. What you see is what is. So I don't. Exactly. Yeah, I'm like this with everyone. Yeah. yeah. Ima I, can just, I, can imagine, I can just imagine a patient of yours in the future being intimidated by you. Because you're just a big. Because well, I think some people, when they see a beautiful person, a beautiful woman who is who happens to be a doctor, especially with men, they easily get intimidated. You know what I mean? So I don't know, it's just a human reaction, but sometimes that's life. <laughs> people get intimidated by other people, you know. Uh, what happens is uh, with patients, what, okay, I've been blessed with one thing in particular, there has never been a patient who did not want to talk to me. So I thank uh, pageantry and public speaking for that. Because what happens is when I know that they look a little guarded, uh, I approach them. So that's the, the little secret. Yeah, like I go and talk to them. Because, you know, sometimes yeah. you can see their face like they're not too sure about you. So you make the first step. Yeah. And not only that, but, you know, as a doctor, I think it's, I think it's, it's your duty to make your patient comfortable. Exactly. Right? No matter what. Yeah, no matter what. Okay. All right. Bend over while I inject you with this five inch needle. <laughs> Kidding. All right. Oh, I mean, I've seen, I have seen some pretty nasty things happening to some patients. So, you know, I told myself that I will be a kinder doctor. What is, this is a serious question, controversial. What is your position on same-sex marriage? Love is love. I have, uh, I don't think I have the right to have an opinion about it because somebody else's choice is 100% theirs. So they should be able to do whatever they want. And I have seen, you know, same-sex couples who are amazing parents and it shouldn't define their, their entire existence. You know, they just chose to love somebody and they should be allowed to do it. Yeah. Um, is same-sex ceremony or marriage allowed in Malaysia or not yet? 
Not yet. <laughs> but hopefully it, it will change. I hope people become more open-minded. I, I honestly do because um, it has a doctor, you know, even um, there are terms in medical textbooks that are very clear that state that every human being is different. Even when we take the Hippocratic Oath, we actually swear by it that we will never judge anybody based on their gender, sex, nothing. So that is something that I stand by. So I hope that more people also adopt the same mindset. Good. Another controversial question. What is your position on allowing trans women to compete in traditional pageants for natural born women? Do you think it's oh, fair? It's something that has already been happening. And well, there are pageants for trans women as well. And now there are pageants that are allowing uh, trans women to compete. And I believe that it is actually the right step forward because we are evolving, like pageants are evolving with time. So we should allow people who you know, feel like they were supposed to be a woman when they were born to compete. Because a part of me feels that denying them that right would actually deny them the liberty to be a woman. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. I, I, I agree. I totally agree. I totally agree, but on certain conditions that this person looks like a woman, behaves like a woman, and is legally and medically recognized by her country as a woman. Period. That's and fine. Fact. Yeah. Yeah. And besides, everything is based on looks and image anyway, not on physical activity. Now, if it were a question of sports, then it would be a totally different issue, a different matter. That I would not approve. But with beauty pageants based on uh, images and looks, I, I have no issue whatsoever. So that's because great to know. If they feel like they were supposed to be a woman, how can we deny them the opportunity to represent their country in, in that way? Because that would be quite um, not selfish of us as human beings. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. No, no problem there. Another question. What do you bring with you everywhere you go? Hmm. Besides Myself? your car? Yourself. <laughs> yes. Hello, myself. <laughs> my my cell phone for sure. My my handphone. It's with me everywhere. Um, not just because like you know I need to take pretty pictures everywhere, but um, in case of an emergency, if somebody has to reach me, at least you know I'm always there. So my handphone never leaves me. I go everywhere with it. <laughs> There you go. I, you know what? It's weird because the other day I, 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 I had a weird dream that everybody on earth was born with a cell phone. They come, oh. out of their, they come out of their mother's womb already holding a cell phone. Uh, in this day and age, I cannot imagine the world, you know, with, with, with people not having a cell phone. It's just weird. You know, it's we, we cannot live without a cell phone anymore because it's our life, it's our lifeguard, pretty much, you know. Even, wow. even doctors, we need to keep our phones with us at all times because we'll never know when, you know, a patient has collapsed and, you know, we need to run towards that person because, I mean, we have pages, but most of the time we use our cell phones. Mm -hmm. So it's like in Malaysia, <clears throat> in Malaysia, we use our cell phones most of the time. So it's a necessity. It is a necessity. Like, you know, driving a car or, you know, or eating. <laughs> it's a necessity. Good. Question from, oh, okay. We have a question from Singapore, from Metal Maiden. Um, they're asking, how does 
the Malaysian pageant organization prepare Miss Malaysia for international pageants? Would that depend? Would that depend on each pageant system in Malaysia? Because how, how does the Miss Earth Miss Earth Malaysia pageant train uh, their contestants? Okay, what I would like to take credit for is that I have made sure yeah. that. Um, I, I shed a very different light on the Miss Earth pageant here in Malaysia. Because what I believe was that it was not getting the recognition that it really deserved. So what I did was I hopped on my advocacy. I, I basically put my advocacy as the main um, part of my journey. And since I have been a Miss Earth pageant lover for so long, I constantly discuss with my team is that, okay, I saw this in this year's pageant. I have to do the same. This catwalk was really good. I have to uh, make sure I'm up, I'm up to that standard. So how I am being prepared is that we are sharing a lot because I'm also kind of... Uh, um, well, based on observation, basically. So they may not know certain things that I tell them that, okay, Miss mm -hmm. Earth is more like this. Miss Earth is more like this. And then they prepare me in a sense that they give me, they equip me with what I need. So Good. that's how we're doing it at the moment, actually. <laughs> Good. Well, you know what? I think one of the good, good ways of, you know, becoming a good uh, pageant organization is to allow the lines of communication open mm. all the time, 24 seven, because I think there's a lot of miscom If there's a lot of miscommunication going on between the contestants and the pageant director, then all hell breaks loose. So everybody must be reading on the same page. You know? Exactly. Awesome. I, I'm yeah. very particular about teamwork because I love working with people and there's always a certain way to get a message across Like you can't be like you know I'm, I need this this must have I know I'm, I'm not that kind of a person I value discussions a lot so if I have something that I truly believe in then I would bring it forward like okay this uh, I like doing this this is happening at this moment. Are you okay with it? Should we proceed? You know, it's, it's like that. It's a discussion. Because actually my, my national director, my license holder, we've been friends for years. So it's a dream come true actually working with them. That's wonderful. So you do get along very well with each other. You, you can pretty much read it, eat each other's yeah. minds. Yeah. Yeah, we do, we do. We do. My dream is, uh, well, of course my dream is to win this earth. But the main reason is to actually give my country a chance to host Miss Earth someday. That, that's my dream. So my, my organization knows that. So that's why I'm like, you know, my license holder is actually also going to be in charge of an international pageant. He founded a, a pageant. So we're all like, you know, praying and keeping our fingers crossed. Like, okay, if Kajal wins, maybe, maybe we can host it, you know, to kind of expand broaden the horizons of pageantry in Malaysia because it's really expanding over here. That's great. That's great. That's wonderful. Enough of questions, Kajal. Now it's time to play games. Are you okay. ready to play games? Okay. Me, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Our first oh, game is called <laughs> This or That. You know how to play this game. I'm going to mention two things and you tell me which you prefer. Okay? Okay. Casual, red wine or white wine? Neither, because the <gasps> girl. Really? You don't drink wine at all? I'm shocked. <laughs> I, I mean, I have tried to drink red wine, but I couldn't really stand the smell. So that's when I decided all together that, okay, alcohol is my problem. <laughs> Fair enough. Ice cream or frozen yogurt, baby? Ice cream. Ice, Ice cream. cream. Okay. Ice cream. Oh, the connection's not so great right now. Do you have a favorite sure. flavor? Problem. Yeah. Yes, 
it's, it's a little choppy, but keep talking. Yeah. Okay. So you like ice cream. Good. Yes, I do. Next. Next one. One piece swimsuit or bikini? Um, one piece swimsuit because I love the 50s vibe of it. Okay. Singing lesson or dance lesson? Oh, I need more singing lessons because that's going to be my talent for Miss Earth. Really? Ooh. Are you going to be singing in English? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have any idea what, what song you're going to sing? <laughs> Lady no. Gaga, perhaps? <laughs> it works, but I have to admit, I'm a very big Dolly Parton fan. Oh, me too. I love Dolly Parton. Country. I, yeah. Jolene is, is something that I know by heart at this point. Oh, you know what? I can, I can see you uh, wearing a blonde wig, oh. and a, 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 a cowboy outfit with playing the guitar and looking and singing like Dolly Parton. I think that should be your talent. Oh my God, that would be a dream. Mm -hmm. It would be, it would be, <laughs> I feel bad for Dolly if I ever butcher her songs, but oh, I'll give Oh, honey, it. she's going to love you for that. She's, she I loves think. everybody. Everybody loves Dolly. So, hey, it's going to be a big honor for her. Do it, do it. <laughs> Fingers crossed, maybe. Kajal, do you prefer foot massage or hand massage? Foot massages. Trust me, doctors always appreciate foot massages because we are up on our feet all day. And now was, I'm a doctor who has to, has to wear six inch heels all the time, honey. So <laughs> I would I would agree. I everybody needs a foot massage for sure. This one is going to be a little harder. Mm. Dog or cat? Oh, that's difficult. It's very difficult, but well, let me put it this way. At the moment, dog. Dog, okay. The moment, okay. dog. Why? Because dogs give you unconditional love. Dogs have basically molded my entire personality. I have never not had a dog in my life. Wait a minute. So, do you sleep with your dogs? I actually do. <laughs> you do? Okay. Me too. Oh. Yeah. Uh, my other dogs are not allowed on the bed, but my poodle is your poodle. because she's the only one. Oh, okay. I think one of my dogs got offended. Uh, <laughs> so my poodle, um, her fur doesn't shed at all. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Uh, so I have very bad. Uh, allergies actually allergies. i'm not allergic to dogs but i have bad allergies so her fur not shedding kind of helps a lot so the rest of the dogs they can't stand me 24 hours anyway so nighttime is their time <laughs> okay all right that's fair yep Kajal, money or love uh, love oh, we all to like to be loved Yes, love. you can't. You can't put a. You can't put a price tag on love. You can't. You can't. You just can't. But at the same time, we all need money, right? <laughs> yeah, practicality. <laughs> a Casual. Pop music or opera? Pop music. Me too. I like pop music. Lesson fan. <laughs> I think opera is nice to listen to when you're trying to study or to relax. Um, mm. But if you want to have a good time, I think pop music is better. Yeah. It puts me in a very happy mood. The pop opera music. kind of makes me a bit emotional. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Game number two. Mm. Your favorites. What is your favorite? non-alcoholic drink i cannot live without soy milk okay soya bean we go soya bean like everywhere i go it's always like uh soya bean satu soya bean satu satu means one so it's okay. always like 
soybean. It, okay. It's basically, I blame my mother because apparently when she was pregnant with me, if she did not get soya bean and well, something we have something called roti chanai here. So if she did not get soya bean and roti chanai every day, she would not want to look my father in the face. So <laughs> I blame her. <laughs> well, do you have, besides soy milk, do you have other plant-based milks in Malaysia like almond milk? or no, I, I'm sure, Okay. Because I prefer almond milk. I love almond milk. Yeah, uh, I like. So yeah, I used to drink soy milk until it started making me bloated, so I stopped. But um, I prefer almond milk. Yeah, I, I like soy milk a lot. Soy milk. Good. What is your favorite wild animal, Kajol? Oh, this one's difficult because. I'm finding it very difficult to choose between two of my favorites, but I think it would have to be, oh, it's difficult to choose between tigers and elephants, <laughs> but Let's choose one. I think tigers, tigers, tigers for sure, mm -hmm. because they're, well, basically they're just big cats. Mm -hmm. They're big cats and they're still very cute, nevertheless. Just be they careful. Are only, in the peninsula of Malaysia, there are only 150 tigers left in the wild, so that's very sad. Yeah, so it's almost extinct. So we have to save Malaysian tigers, right? Yeah. Good. What is your favorite fashion accessory? Rings. Rings? I love rings and I love gold. So I always have a gold ring on. <laughs> what is your favorite flower? I love you for this because my graduation flowers are actually right next to me right now. Ooh, show me, show me. I, oh, Whoa. I just I, I just took one out. It's it's already dying. But <laughs> You should put it red, in a vase with water. I should have, but I thought of like, you know, leaving it dry, leaving it upside yeah. down dry, and then just preserving it. Mm -hmm. It's a very cliche answer. I know, red roses. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's romantic, nevertheless. Yeah, I, I, everybody loves roses. I love roses too. What is your favorite spice being Punjabi princess? What is your favorite spice? These are very difficult questions. Um... Hmm. Oh my God, I love spicy food, so it's very hard. But I like pepper. Black pepper. pepper? Black pepper? Black pepper. I like black pepper in almost everything. I think yes. it really brings... It's essential the food. food. Yep, yeah. it's essential. <laughs> I totally so, agree. What is your favorite color, girl? Gold. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gold. loves gold. Woohoo! Give for carrot magic in the air. So yeah, gold. I love the color gold. I feel like it's very, it um, it's a royal color. Oh, yeah. It is royal color. Every, everybody Definitely. needs a gold in their life. <laughs> it's funny because in in basically every Bollywood movie that I that I saw, uh, there's a lot of like uh, marigold, gold, red, burgundy. A lot of earth tones as well in a lot of Bollywood movies that I've seen. Yeah, so Indians love gold, that's for sure. I think uh, the most gold is owned by Indian women. I think that was a study. Uh, and because yeah. gold is actually an alien, so yeah. I just feel it makes it extra special. So yeah, yeah gold. Oh. Good. Go, go. Next go, go. game. Kajal, it's called Would You Rather? First question. Would you rather be a famous director or a famous actress? A famous actress. For sure. Of course. Of course. An actress and a doctor at the same time. Ooh, that would be that would be uh, another dream true, actually. Yes. Kajal, would I, you rather? Good question. Um, sorry intrude sorry to intrude but 
if I had the chance, I mean, of course, in Bollywood, you already know it's Ranveer Singh. In Malaysia, you know, I have my favorite Malaysian actor, uh, who is actually Aaron Aziz. But in the Philippines, I'm actually very in love with Gerald Anderson. <laughs> with who? I think Gerald Anderson. Oh, Gerald Anderson. Okay. He's cute. So, yeah. So I think after I watched um, Always always Be My Maybe, I kind of like, if I was an actress and I was in the Philippines, <sighs> dream come true. All right, Gerald Anderson, if you're watching the show, call please, me. Uh, please call, please call Kajal. <laughs> All right, would you rather live in a cave or live in a tree house? I would rather live in a cave. In a cave? That's shocking. I was, I was, I thought you were gonna say treehouse because it's trees. I, I kind of love caves, and it would be familiar because uh, in Ipo we have many caves. We have a lot of uh, cave temples as well. Really? So it's, yeah, it's a wonderful thing to actually be in a cave. Okay. You should try well, it sometime. When Come I, when I go to, when I go to Malaysia right. one of these days, I will definitely. Hook up with you and you can take me to one of these caves that you like. Great. <laughs> Would you rather have a flying carpet or a car that can drive underwater? I would rather have a flying carpet. Like Aladdin, a whole Co new world. Dream. <laughs> and... I would not be polluting the environment. So there you go. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> totally. And the carpet has to be organic, made of organic raw materials, right? Exactly. That would be a big plus point. It's like Jasmine's gone green. There you go. <laughs> would you rather be forced to eat only spicy food or incredibly bland food? Ah, uh, the medical point of me would definitely agree on bland food, but I can't say no to spicy food. Good answer. Would <laughs> you rather live without the internet or live without air conditioning and heating? Oh, I'm okay without air conditioning and heating. Really? Not me. Uh-uh. Why? That's Why are you okay? Right. I mean, air conditioning is, is not the best thing for the environment, but without the internet, I couldn't have met you. That's true. That's true. Keeps Good answer. Connected. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. Okay, this is difficult. Would you rather take a vow of celibacy or take a vow of silence? <sighs> take a vow of celibacy. I knew it. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Take a while of celibacy. Taking a while of silence is impossible. It's impossible, especially if you are uh, talking about your advocacy or promoting awareness or fighting, fighting for animals because animals need, our, need your voice. So, yeah, definitely. Exactly. Actually, yeah, what you're saying is completely um, right. It's being the voice for the voiceless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you rather be the manager of a store with bad employees or be one of the bad employees? Oh, I would be the manager of the bad employees. The manager of the bad employee? Okay. Yes, because I believe that it would take a very special set of skills to actually make those bad employees better people. So I, I would take on the challenge for sure. Good. And we all love challenges. I do. Would you rather have unlimited international first class tickets or never have to pay for food at restaurants. Never have to pay for food at restaurants. 
especially I mean, when prices are going up these days. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a basic necessity, and but I don't like to waste food. That's one of my advocacy. Say no okay. to food waste. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. um, getting enough, getting like you know unlimited supply of food would also mean that I could take some and give it to someone else. So That's that would true. make me happy as well. Exactly. Good answer. I never thought about that. Good answer. I'm glad. Last <laughs> game, Kajol. Okay, this one is called Give a Wrong Answer. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question and you will give me a wrong answer. Okay. All right? Okay. First question, Kajol. Please tell me, why is the sky blue? Wrong answer. <laughs> Because God wanted to paint it uh, purple, but he kind of spilled too much of white paint on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, one, that was one very creative, imaginative answer. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> it's funny, though. Next question. <laughs> Wrong answer. Tell me. How do you make a cappuccino? How do you name a cappuccino? Um, what happens is you combine the names of the first five people that ordered that drink, and that's how you get the name of the cappuccino. Okay. No, so you you refer you referring to the actual name itself, not the actual drink. <laughs> so. No, not the actual drink. So that's how you name it. So the first five people to order it, okay. So your ka and your this, and just put it together and make a cappuccino. Oh, cappuccino. All right. Well, that makes sense. Next question. Wrong answer. Tell me why are there seven colors in the rainbow? Why? Oh. Um, we wanted to do 12, but there were budget cuts. Funny. <laughs> 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 oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> good one. Wrong answer. Very good one. Kajol, next question. Tell me, who is your worst enemy? My worst enemy? Wrong answers only, right? Wrong answer, baby. <laughs> Who is my worst enemy? Oh, but this one's going to be right. Um, okay, my worst enemy is... <laughs> Your poodle? <laughs> my worst enemy at the moment would be the cat across the street. Why? What did the cat across the street do to you? I have been trying to pet it for a very long time, but all it does is just eats the food that I put out for him, and then he runs away. Okay. No but, of course, of but, of course, but of course, that's the wrong answer, which means the cat is actually nice, right? It probably <laughs> likes me. I give it to him every day, but no sign of appreciation whatsoever. There you go. That's why I prefer dogs. <laughs> I always appreciate you. <laughs> Next question. Tell me, wrong answer. Kajol, where do you go to get a haircut? Oh, you go to the gas station. <gasps> Ooh, okay. <laughs> so they, they, they throw gasoline at your hair and that's the way they cut it. Burn, and they just burn off the excess. And you, and you come out like looking bald. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a very long lasting haircuts. There you go. Next question. <laughs> Tell me, what is the biggest city in the world? Wrong answers only, yes? Yes. The biggest city in the world. Oh, it's wrong, but I feel that it shouldn't. should be my city, Ipo. Ipo. The biggest okay. How many people are there at Ipo? Not that many. 
So that's why it's the biggest city in the world because there aren't a lot of people. <laughs> Good one. Last question, Kajal. Tell me, wrong answer. Who will win Miss Earth 2022? Not Kajulko from Malaysia. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so that's the wrong answer, which means it could be the true answer, right? Okay. <laughs> Listen, I had such a good time chatting with you, and I feel like I've gotten to know you much better. And of course, a lot of your followers have also gotten to know you much better. They see a different side of Dr. Cajal for. They don't see you necessarily as a doctor. They see you as Cajal for who you are. And I think you have uh, charmed them. You have charmed your heart through them. Uh, you have, you're, you're, you're very bubbly. You're very personable. You're very warm. And you just radiate this aura, this magical aura uh, around you. So, which is always, always appreciated by passion fans around the world. So before I let you go, I have actually a few questions. Sure. Uh, have you picked your gown yet? No, I have not. You haven't? Okay. I have, do you have not. An idea? Do you have an idea what color? Girl, what are you waiting for? The, 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 the contest is like two months away. You better hurry it up. I'm actually waiting for my for my manager. He's, he's a little busy at the moment. So we're going to get together and really brainstorm very, very soon. Okay. All right. So, yeah, the gown is important. What about your national costume? Are you Same working thing. on it? I'm work, I, we have a few ideas out there. But, you know, I'm waiting for the whole team to be free so that we can, you know, decide and discuss. And maybe the best outcome will happen. <laughs> hopefully, 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 that's good. Yeah. Now, do you have a message that you would like to transmit to your fans and to the people who are watching the show all over the world? My message would be that it is time for Malaysia to be seen as a pageant powerhouse. And I hope I get the honor to put it on that pedestal. Because That's Miss Earth is something that is so important to me and it can really help my country and really, really help not just the people, but the animals, especially the strays. It's very important. And of course, as you know, the theme this year of Miss Earth is M E C Earth. Miss Earth loves fauna. Look at the coincidence. Miss Earth loves animals, which is which is very very appropriate, you know, for you for your advocacy as well as for the other contestants who share the same platform as yours. So, I think it's about time. I really, I really, really believe that it's a, it's, it's, it's a long to overdue. Okay. Because we can only care so much about plants and 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 and, uh, and surroundings and the trees. We only plant trees so many times, but what are we doing with animals? You know, they're all, they're also suffering from from human. What uh, is, is that uh, we're living on borrowed land, so we are actually borrowing this planet from them. So taking care of them can actually help us in so many ways spiritually, emotionally, we basically learn how to take care of the planet from them. We are literally seeing how, you know, bees pollinate and, you know, how animals look after the planet. So it's time to appreciate them and really focus on protecting them. I totally agree. I cannot imagine the world without animals. So we all have to take care of them because they depend on our kindness and our companionship. So that's it. Kajal, sweetheart, thank you so much for granting me this opportunity to interview you. And I wish you, I wish you the best of luck. And once this video is uploaded, 
you know, uh, you can share it with your followers out there. And I'm, I'm going to post the link to your social media in the okay. description box below so people, people can follow you. So thank you so much and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the evening. And say hello to your dogs and cats and to your other animals. <laughs> I mean, the dogs, the cats. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Seriously, this has been a very, very fun interview. Thank you. And hopefully it's not going to be the, the last. Hopefully we'll be able to talk again. Eventually. Oh, no, it's not going to be the last. This, this was a really, really good interview. And you're such a nice person. It was very nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Critical Beauty Salon viewers, thank you for joining me and Dr. Kajal Kaur tonight. And please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel, please do so by clicking the subscribe button. And I wish you all the best in the world. And we will see you in Miss Earth 2022 pageant in the Philippines in October. Bye, everybody. Bye. Give me your hugs. Bye. <laughs> good night. Bye. And good day to you. Thank you.